So I hope by the end of today, you'll understand that hold the ball is actually a very important piece of all of your Tai Chi. So I'm going to move up to the mirror here. And the first thing that we're going to do is not hold the ball. We're going to do pushing Chi. So just bring your left foot forward. And as you rock back, you're breathing in. As you're rocking forward, you're breathing out. And just gently feel what that rocking back and forth feels like with your pushing chi. And think about now, bring that left foot back, bring the right foot forward. How easy it is to make this backwards rock equivalent to the forwards motion. It's very simple in our pushing chi. It feels very natural. It feels right to make this motion going backwards equivalent to the motion going forwards. Unfortunately, it's not always that way with our movement. Let's think about chi walking. I'm going to go this direction now. When we get into chi walking and we've practiced it for a while, and sometimes our brains are not on what we're doing, our chi walking can look like this. And believe me, I've done it. I, I'm not pointing fingers at you. It's, okay, I'm rocking, I'm rocking. This is, I'm going slowly, but I'm not really feeling what I'm doing. This is part of what hold the ball is all about, is understanding each movement and understanding each um, transition from substantial to insubstantial. So as you're doing chi walking now, what I want you to do is feel that substantial, then rock back, make this an equivalent movement and then bring all the weight onto that left leg, stepping forward with the right, rocking forward. As you rock back, feel the left become substantial. Then you're moving forward, bringing that weight onto the right. It makes you slow down quite a bit. You have to actually focus on making that movement even. So I'm going to turn this way. Let's do chi walking again. So as you bring the weight to the left, rocking back, feel that weight shift. And then you bring all the weight onto that left, step forward with the right. Bring in the weight forward, but that weight coming back is just as important. Don't rush it. One more step, bringing the weight onto that left, then the right becomes more substantial. Now the left becomes 100% substantial so that you can step forward with that right leg. So the movements that are really based on chi walking have that hold the ball. When you think about part the wild horse's mane, you think about brush knee, and fair lady works the shuttle. So all of these are very important, feeling that, making it equivalent motion. So if we hold the ball to the right, and we're going to do part the wild horse's mane first. Step forward with that left, part the wild horse's mane. Now the rocking back por portion of that is where you're holding the ball, bringing the weight onto that left leg, and then you're coming into your next part, the wild horse's mane. So if you think about really what are you doing as you hold the ball, it's not just transitioning from one part, the wild horse's mane, into the next. You're holding that ball, step out, part the wild horse's mane. Right here, what are you doing? You're gathering that energy. 
you're gathering energy in order to bring that energy against your opponent. If you don't take time to gather the energy, you're not going to have energy to bring against your opponent. If you cheat this hold the ball and all you focus on is the aggressive motion of that part the wild horse's mane, you don't have energy to bring against your opponent. You're fooling yourself. You have to focus on gathering that energy first and then bringing that force against them. Gathering that energy and then being able to expend the energy. There's one more thing that you're doing in that hold the ball. As you breathe in and then you breathe out. Breathing in and then breathing out. We want to make our breathing uniform as well. It also has to do with the martial arts application. You have to have a good breath to be able to have the force to be able to actually address your opponent. So breathing in Breathing out as you come into your motion. Your hold the ball is gathering the energy, breathing in and breathing out. What happens if you cheat that hold the ball with your breath? If you take a nice deep breath in here as you're starting and you breathe out and breathe in and you're not gonna have time, you're not gonna have anything in the tank for breathing out. If you cheat, that hold the ball and it's not uniform. Let's do it with brush knee. It's the same concepts with brush knee. You're holding that ball, taking a nice deep breath in, breathing out, gathering that energy and expending that energy. One more step. And it really does make you slow down, correct? It gives you a focus where you're actually understanding your body movement. You're not just thinking about the aggressive portion. You're not just thinking about going forward. You actually have to think about that yielding that coming back. You have to know where your weight is. You have to know where your balance point is. And if you slow yourself down and you start to focus on that movement, you're going to be much more balanced. So let's do it again with our brush knee. Taking a nice deep breath in, step out, brush knee. Now gather that energy, take your time, brush knee. Gathering, breathing in and breathing out. Now with Fair Lady Works the Shuttle, we only do it two times in the form, but it's the same idea. And it actually comes from, if you remember, we've just done snake creeps, pheasant stands. And we're like this, and we step down and we gather that energy because we're about to come out with our Fair Lady Works the Shuttle. And then we have to gather and Fair Lady Works the Shuttle. So that lowly hold the ball is actually very important for you to be able to have energy, for you to be able to understand your balance point, to be able to breathe properly with a nice uniform, strong breath. So again, you're in that pheasant stands position and you step down and you gather that energy, you breathe in and you step out with Fair Lady Works the Shuttle. Breathing in, 
gathering the energy and breathing out. So hold the ball is much more than just <sighs> hold the ball. <laughs> when we first learn it, when, when we're first learning Tai Chi, and that's one of the first movements that we learn, we talk about our columns, keeping those columns intact. We talk about substantial and insubstantial, bringing the weight over completely to one side and then to the other side. And we talk about this hold the ball. We teach hold the ball in terms of those principles. Oftentimes, once we get into learning the form and doing the form, that whole idea of hold the ball just drops out of existence. And sometimes you'll even see people cheat that hold the ball position where they'll be doing part the wild horse's mane, they do a little bit of a rotation, and then they'll part the wild horse's mane, part the wild horse's mane or with brush knee. They'll do brush knee, and then they'll do brush knee like this, and it becomes more like a swimming motion. That kind of cheating holding the ball, now you can see they're cheating their energy. They're cheating their breath. They're not understanding their substantial and insubstantial. This is why hold the ball is so important. It's going to help you slow down. It's going to help you understand where your weight is. It makes you focus on which side is substantial, which is insubstantial. It helps you bring your breathing into every single movement, which again drives the benefit of relaxation and the benefit of being focused. We haven't talked about that a lot in our Tai Chi Live, but being in the moment, being able to be focused and really truly feeling every single step is a benefit of Tai Chi. Mm -hmm.